This video is recorded for students in the course of statistics in order to provide them with the knowledge and skills on how to complete the requirements of phase three of the group project. By the end of this recorded video, students will be able to achieve four objectives. Um, learn how to calculate the measures of central tendency, including the mean, medium mode for ungrouped quantitative data sets. Second objective, students will be able to um, know how to calculate the measures of dispersion, including the range, variance, and standard deviation for um, the ungrouped quantitative data sets. Uh, the third objective is to learn how to calculate the measures of central tendency, including the mean and the mood for a grouped quantitative data sets and the last objective is to learn how to calculate the um, measures of dispersion including the um, uh, uh, variance and standard deviation uh, for uh, grouped quantitative data sets um, well uh, in phase one uh, we learned how to um, uh, write and design uh, appropriate research questions and how to and upload the questions on Microsoft Forms. And then, of course, we managed to collect uh, the data and uh, go through the data cleaning process, exclude uh, unreliable or uh, unvalid responses. And then in phase two, if you remember, we also learned how to organize and graph the collected data in phase one using frequency distribution tables and different graphs and charts. In this phase, we will learn how to um, uh, uh, calculate certain numerical measures that will help in summarizing the data and shedding the light on the most important findings. And these are the four requirements that we'll achieve in uh, this recorded video. Um, we'll start with the first one is how to prepare the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mood uh, for your ungrouped data. And this is the Excel uh, sheet that we produced um, in phase two. Uh, if you remember, um, uh, we decided to select the age as uh, a quantitative variable and it is a continuous variable um, and we uh, uh, converted the ungrouped data set that we had originally in the um, raw data sheet that includes the 125 responses into a group data set as it is shown um, uh, and of course we managed to do that by using uh, six classes and these are the frequencies and 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 so on now uh, what we're going to do, we will um, now calculate the um, measures of central tendency. So uh, I'm going to uh, prepare here or merge uh, these two cells. And then I say, for example, uh, measures of of um, um, or or we'll start indeed. We will do the calculation of measures of central tendency and uh, measure of the dispersions on 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 ungrouped data. So we'll start by you know uh, working on uh, ungrouped um, uh, data. And uh, what are the three measures of central tendency? Uh, we've got the mean and also the um, uh, median. And we've got also the mood. These are the three measures of central tendency. If you remember, the mean is the first measure of central tendency, which is used to uh, find the average um, uh, um, uh, of um, uh, the quantitative data. Now, uh, it is calculated since we are working on a sample by this formula, uh, which is x bar is equivalent to sigma x divided by by n. Let me just put the formula somewhere here. I'm going to copy this formula and then put it next to what I'm going to do. But do you think uh, when we use Excel, we have to go through this? And of course, these are the x values here. Add them and divide by 125. Of course not. Within a few clicks, we can you know calculate the mean. What I need to do is to put the cursor uh, in the cell that I want to produce the result in here and then hit equal. Whenever I hit equal, I'm telling Excel to perform a mathematical or statistical function. What is that function? I'm going to write average AV, 
and this is indeed you know uh, the second function as you see will appear average then please double click on the function average of what um, I need to select the X values. So these are, you know, the responses that I received from the 125 respondent. Um, so uh, what uh, once I do that, I'm going to just hit enter. And as you see, the average age of the 125 uh, respondents who participated in my questionnaire is 23.7. You can say close to 24 years old. OK, fantastic. This is the first measure of central tendency for the ungroup data. Now I want to calculate the median and the median, as we know, it is the value uh, in the middle term of a ranked data set. Uh, if we want to calculate it manually, we need to rank the data set from the smallest value to the largest value and then eliminate one item from the left, one item from the right. But of course, we there is no need to do and go through this process when we are working using Excel. I need to put the cursor here and hit equal again and tell Excel to perform a mathematical or a statistical function. In this case, it is the medium. As you see, uh, it's a stored function. You double click here and then uh, you just select the observations or the X values and then Excel will help you in doing this process would rank them from the smallest to the largest, eliminate one le from left side, one from the right, and so on. So uh, the median um, is a 20. It happens to be 20 indeed. Uh, that means, um, let's say 50% of the respondents who participated in the survey questionnaire are 20 years old or less, and 50% of the respondents indeed are uh, 20 years or more. Um, it's the value in the middle term of a ranked data set. Now, the mood is the value that occurs with the highest frequency. So uh, 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 again, we are not going to uh, find it manually. We not need to put the course cursor here, hit equal, and then press or write, type MOD, and then the mood will, 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 will occur. Now, of course, we've got three types of modes. We know that we have uh, unimodal, bimodal, and multimodal. Of course, the second option is when you want to find multi, and this, uh, the, the third is single. So let's choose the, the fourth one that can find any type of modes. So I'm going to again select the ungroup data set here. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to go to my cell and hit equal, and then it happens to be that the mode is also the value that occurs with the highest frequency is 20 years old. By this, um, we can say that we successfully uh, managed to find, you know, uh, the three measures of central tendency for the ungroup data set. Now, and this is the first objective. Now, the second objective is to find the measures of dispersion, including the range, variance, and standard deviation for also um, uh, the ungroup data set. And this is my ungroup data set here. So what we want to find is the range, uh, variance, and uh, standard deviation. Uh, so let's call it SD. Now, the range uh, is the largest value minus the smallest value. And again, uh, I'm just going to select the column from the top. And then if you click on this tab that says data, and then you're going to basically click on this um, uh, uh, button here that says sort, and we want to sort them from the smallest to the largest or largest to the smallest. Let's leave it as it is, smallest to the largest, hit OK, and then we know that the smallest value is 17, and the largest value here in this data set is 84. So uh, I'm going to put the cursor here, uh, hit equal, tell Excel to perform a mathematical function. What is that function? I'm going to subtract the largest value, and then I'm going to uh, uh, use the subtraction sign um, and then uh, select the smallest value and hit enter. The range is 67. That means uh, the age of um, uh, uh, the sample um, spread over a range of uh, 67 years old, starting from the smallest value or the smallest age, which is 17, to the largest age, which is 84. Now, the variance is another measure of dispersion that tells how uh, the values vary from each other. And of course, if we want to calculate it using basically the uh, formulas that we studied in chapter three, we can use the 
basic formula or the shortcut formula, and this is the formula. Let me just copy it and put it here. OK, it is basically as squared is equivalent to sigma x squared minus sigma x. All of it is squared by n and all the expression divided by m minus one. So I mean, these are the x values. I need to prepare x and square them, and then it's basically a time consuming process if I'm going to do it using this formula. But using our beloved Excel, I can hit equal here and then I want to calculate the variance. So I'm going to type V A R and then look. Uh, you can calculate the variance. The first one is var var dot P if you want to calculate it for a population. But in my case, I've got a sample, so it is V A R dot S. So I'm going to choose the second one. And again, I need to select the ungrouped data set. This is my ungrouped data set, and these are the observations, no more, no less. And then I go up and then hit enter. That means the variance is 107 point, we can say five. Uh, the standard deviation is, is found by taking the square root of the variance, or um, I can also hit equal, and the standard deviation is a very common measure of dispersion that tells how the values are clustered or grouped around the mean by writing ST and then deviation. That means the standard deviation dot P for a population dot S for a sample. I'm going to choose the second one because I am working on a sample and then select the X values. These are the X values and then I go up and then I hit enter and this is the standard deviation. Of course, if I want to take the square root of the variance, I should get the same result. Like if I'm going to put the cursor here, hit equal, and then I'm going to say square root, it's function SQRT square root, double click on this square root of this value, the value of the variance, you're going to get the same result. So by this, I managed to complete two objectives from this recorded video is to calculate the measures of central tendency for ungrouped data and measures of dispersion for ungrouped data. Now, we want to do the same thing, but we will calculate them for this group data set. We converted this ungrouped data set into a group data set, and now we will do the same calculations. That means we will basically say that these are the grouped data set calculations. And if you look to the third bullet point, it says that we should calculate the mean and the mood only. OK, so we want to calculate the mean and the mood. OK, and the fourth one says that we want to calculate the variance and uh, the standard deviation. So this is the fourth objective, SD. OK, let's start with the mean. Uh, if you uh, uh, remember, we discussed in chapter three that in order to calculate the mean of of group data set, we have to use the formula that includes the midpoints. Um, and X bar is equivalent to sigma m times f divided by n because we will use the midpoints um, values in order to estimate, you know, the original X values as estimators uh, and then I need to multiply if by the frequency this column and let me just highlight the column from the top using a unique color let's say green and then I've got here to highlight the midpoint and then uh, I need to multiply the midpoint uh, of each class by the frequency so I'm going to call this column m times f and then guess what I'm going to hit equal here I multiply the midpoint times the frequency and then hit enter and then I want to duplicate the same function. So I put the cursor here till I see the black plus sign in the down, you know, uh, right corner and then I duplicate the function. OK, fantastic. So this is the product of the midpoints by the frequencies. Now, uh, I, not, I, I want to find the sigma, the sum of all these products. That means I'm going to put the cursor here and hit equal to Excel to perform a function of what? Of adding sum and sum, and then choose the first one, and then I am gonna add all you know the products here. And that means this is the value in the numerator. 
okay, I should divide this by the total number of observations, which is 125. So now I want to produce the result here. So I'm going to put the cursor, hit equal, and then divide this number, the sigma m times f, divided by the um, 125 observations that I have in my data set. And now let's have a look to the average is 40. It's 24.9 around, you know, um, uh, 25, but here it is around 24. There is, you know, a difference between the mean that I calculated in the group data set and the ungrouped data set. And of course, the reason because here I'm using the midpoints and um, in the one that I calculated for the ungrouped data set, I used the raw data the original X values, and indeed this one is very accurate, is more accurate compared to the other one. And that's why in this project, we need to collect raw data. Uh, we are not supposed indeed to give choices for the age so that once we calculate the measures of central tendency and dispersion for the ungrouped and group data, we'll be able to compare between the minor differences. It could be minor, sometimes it could be major. Now, the mood is the value that that indeed occurs with the with the highest frequency, and 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 if you look here uh, to the to the to the bars, uh, the bar that is considered to be the tallest bar is this one, 17 to um, uh, 20, 26. That means uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna consider that uh, the mood here um, is is uh, uh, the 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 midpoint of 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 the first class. Or uh, we can say that this is the first class indeed. Um, uh, so the midpoint of the first class is 20, 21 point, 21 point five indeed. So what I'm going to say that this is the mode. It's again an estimated. The accurate one is indeed is, indeed is the 20. Now the variance. Um, if I want to calculate the variance manually, um, uh, and of course now I'm moving to the fourth objective of this video, calculating the measures of dispersion for, you know, um, the group data, I should use this formula. And again, this is the shortcut formula to calculate the variance for, you know, a group data set. So uh, it is, is, x, is x squared is equivalent to sigma m squared times f minus sigma m times f squared divided by n, all the expression divided by m minus 1. So I need to prepare, of course, this is the column m times f is this expression here, but I need to prepare a column for, you know, m squared times f. So that means I'm going to say m here um, uh, raised to the power. Um, uh, so I'm going to say it is m um, uh, uh, squared. That means um, uh, uh, um, uh, m times m. Okay, you can write it or you can say it's m squared times f. Okay, that means I'm going to put the cursor here and hit equal, and then this is the class midpoint 21.5 times itself. Okay, I'm going to multiply it by itself times the frequency, and, and this is the answer here. I want to duplicate the same, you know, uh, uh, formula, so I'm going to uh, uh, click and drag and then of course what I want to find here is sigma that means I should add all of these values so I'm going to put the cursor hit equal and then type sum till I see the sum function and then uh, add you know uh, the results here now I want to produce the result in the cell that says variance so I'm going to hit equal and now I will open my parentheses in order to choose the first value is sigma. I will work on the numerator and the denominator. Sigma m squared times f, and this is the product here. Okay, minus, and then I'm gonna open another parenthesis, and then inside this parenthesis, I will, you know, um, uh, say uh, I will open another parenthesis, and it is indeed um, uh, uh, sigma um, uh, m times f squared. That means this is the sigma m times f, the sum of m times f multiplied by itself. And then, OK, I multiply it by itself. I'm going to close this internal parenthesis and divide by n. n represents 125. And then now I'm going to uh, uh, close the external parenthesis here. And now um, uh, uh, I will, you know, um, uh, close 
the uh, uh, last parenthesis here, and, and this is the expression for the numerator. I want to divide this by the denominator, which is 125. I'm going to select 125 minus 1, and I close this. And now this is the answer. If you look to the answer, the variance here is uh, 87.26. And of course, uh, there is a difference between the one that we calculated for n group data set and then the one for group data set. And of course, I've already explained the reason of the difference because we're using here the midpoints. Now, the last thing is to calculate the standard deviation. To do so, you just need to take the uh, square root. I hit equal and then uh, type SQRT and then the square root will appear. Double click on it and take the square root of the variance and the square root is 9.3 for uh, for for a group data, and 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 it is 10.3 for ungrouped data. Uh, 10 point uh, around 10.36. That means or or could be 10.4. So you can design, you can you know do whatever um, uh, design that you want to use. Uh, you know the artistic, um, you know issues are uh, your own choice. Um, uh, now uh, by this. Uh, we managed to uh, achieve the four objectives, um, calculating the measures of central tendency for um, ungrouped data and group data, measures of dispersion for ungrouped data and also group data. Uh, the same process um, uh, uh, need to be uh, repeated for, for each quantitative variable uh, in my data set. And um, uh, uh, that's what I want to uh, uh, achieve in the video. Thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully this um, video will make uh, uh, the experience of completing the requirements of phase three of the group project exciting. Uh, thank you very much.